we're gonna jump but it makes me think of something here mind control so i'm gonna make a little link i remember on your web um, facebook page you talk about flat earth and you describe that yeah people may have that uh paradigm because of this and this and this could you please uh explain to the people bro yes sir yes sir flat earth there is a flat earth there is a flat earth it's just not in this dimension it's like sliders you have people who were who actually in a in another lifetime in another life stream lived on a flat earth and that spills over into this earth okay and they could still be living mentally in that flat earth there are pyramid shaped earths there are this listen it's a multiplex or what they call a googleplex of infinite realities that's not my reality where i'm at right now i'm not saying that there is no flat earth I'm saying there is a flat earth, but not in my reality and not in this actuality, okay? So you have your own reality because anyone who says it's a flat earth never been out of space. They're only reading from what somebody told them. And then you have a, 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 a PSYOP agent that I've studied for years, worked for PSYOPs, He said that the, the, the whole flat earth program comes out of PSYOPs. And the person who came out and said that was killed in a plane crash. Now I said, well, why is that? Plus, who gives a fuck if the earth is flat? What, what is the outcome and what are you going to do about it? What's, what? What? Exactly the same thing that I was thinking, so. You know what? I mean, you disrespecting your ancestors because your ancestors gave you a round fucking head. He gave your woman big round breasts, big round butt, gave the trees every fruit you know almost, maybe about 95% is round. So now you're telling me a flat earth created round fruit, you idiot. You're an idiot. That's like telling me, that's like if I'm on a round earth and it produced flat fruit. And, it, and it's not, it's not, and you know that CERN is involved. How do we know that CERN is involved? Because what happened was I'm old enough, that's why they like to get rid of elders. They like to get rid of, I'm a baby boomer. So they want to get, they like to get rid of those people fast. That's why they're the first ones they injected. Because you could tell what, how the Mandela effect and how those realities were changed. When I was coming up, only the European who was an idiot at that time thought the earth was flat. No, the whole Afrocentric movement was about round earth. All of a sudden, that is reversed. And I know that is, they, they change reality. They are time traveling and they're changing shit. And so they put up a frequency fence around the earth because in another way, the reason why you know the earth is round because they have a ring around the earth like Saturn. There's a ring around the earth made of all of space debris, broken up satellites and all kinds of shit floating around the earth, which just recently they discovered huge ships uh, building a ring, building the rings around Saturn and expanding them. They, I mean, they, you can go online and look this up. They spotted these ships building rings around Saturn. Okay? So, so Earth is ringed with satellites. They're all around the whole Earth. Okay? And everything out there 
is run, even asteroids ain't flat. You mean Earth is less than an asteroid? Even if it is a penal colony, it wouldn't be flat. And when they say flat Earth, they show me a, 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 a flat land with a dome over it. That ain't flat. It's a dome. You understand? So, and, and then tell you you can't go. That again. You can, they tell me you can't go past the, the North Pole. You can't go past Antarctica. Oh, oh really? <laughs> so CERN, remember, time travel, dimensional changes, it's all going on. You better keep focus on what's going on. You, you'll remember today, you, you young man, well, remember some stuff that you know you know today in about a year or two from now, maybe five years, six years from now, it's going to totally change to the opposite because of what they're doing. I've studied mind control. I've studied time travel extensively with, with a time traveler. Me and Al Bielek used to kick it all Absolutely. the time. We talk about it all the time. Matter of fact, he's, he's, me and him have a conversation in my next book that I recorded. So, so I know what I'm talking about when it comes to this time travel, time changes, CERN, and so on and so on, okay? I know what I'm talking about when it comes to that. Uh -huh. Now, definitely uh, right on this, Will. And for the people, uh, one of my experiences, actually, you know, prior coming again on this earth plane, uh, I was standing, you know what I'm saying, on the uh, round store and looking at the uh, earth, you know what I mean? So uh, for the people that may probably more sensitive or, you know, have a higher level of current principle uh, about those metaphysics uh, accounts, you know, uh, it was round, you know what I'm saying? So I'm only reinforcing what the elder is stating and what orders walked here before us uh, left as evidence. Yeah, so that's a PSYOP that was created by Colonel Aquino. So Colonel Aquino, if you look up Congressional Budget Section 5, 1970, is they were, there's a conversation in Congress to, whether it would be possible to engineer a virus that targets the human immune system. And Dr. Sykes that was attending there was the one being asked, he said, uh, and also like uh, a lot of congressmen were there. Uh, the main people in Congress that were talking at the time were the congressmen for Hawaii. Um, were asking him, you know, as well as Colonel Kennel, why hasn't it been done? Is it a lack of desire or a lack of funds? And he said, certainly not a lack of funds. And so he said, what kind of uh, funds are we talking about? And he said, $10 million. So that you can see in that congressional document that it was funded to create a virus that target the human immune system to be done as a joint research project by the KGB, the MI6 and the CIA at Fort Detrick in Maryland. And that was uh, part of Colonel Aquino's, uh, one of the things he's involved in. Um, another thing is the flat earth psyop. So that you, if you go on Blessed to Teach, I did a, on backstage, um, the four pillars of Satan. And so one of his tricks is to make him look huge and God look small. So how he does that is God is infinite and creation is infinite. An infinite creator creates infinitude of species, beings, life forms, etc. So if you have a being like Satan that's only localized on earth and he wants to be powerful and look threatening and powerful and massive, you, you need a flat earth. You need a situation in which it looks like he rules everything. And that's just earth. And so you want to have where it appears that he is, that there's the stars or you know, small, but if you have all these space program and, you know, yeah, you see like they fake the moon landing, but they actually did go there too. You have both happening where they fake some things because if they crash, they're not going to like thousand, you know, massive amounts of money and then they crash. Uh, you know, and then also there were Draco ships lined up on the crater wall. If you watch um, 
my, uh, William Tompkins, he talks about this. He's a whistleblower that came out and he was pivotal to the Majestic 12 and the development of Solar Warden. And you go to listen to his uh, interviews with uh, Kerry Cassidy of uh, Project Camelot, as well as uh, several other people. He goes into this and they, they were being watched by the Draco standing on the rim of the crater with big, huge ships there. So, I mean, it's not like you're going to be able to show that to the media, the, the people at the time, but people are going to freak. So you have all of these craft being developed and he was pivotal in that. And so, you know, you can see the earth there. And, you know, I, I can tell you also from having died for 30 minutes when I came back to earth. First, I was immediately over the Milky Way. So I didn't see the earth. I was outside the Milky Way because you get out of the soul trap. You have to immediately get out of the Milky Way. And then I left our, our galaxy behind and went past many galaxies heading to the central sun that all the galaxies orbit, which is called Shigra. And so when I came back, I asked God if I could come back to help for the Great Awakening and to help humanity survive what's coming. And so when I came back, I came and saw the Earth from first I saw the Milky Way again. Then I came to our solar system. And that's why I know it's trinary because I saw the other suns and I saw the other systems and I saw planets. That's why I knew about to, to find information about Vulcan. I saw it. I'm like, let me see if I can find information about this planet. And then I you know, saw the earth. Uh, so yeah, everything is, you know, as above, so below. So everything, if you look at things on earth, everything is, has an organization to it. It's all based on a sacred geometry, one constant called phi, which is the golden mean. So that means there's one creator and everything's created in a certain geometrical pattern based on phi. So if you look at the atom and the electrons orbiting it in clouds, you know, of eventualities of where they are, then that's a spherical system. Then if you look at, you know, as you go up everything, you look at the proton, same thing, spherical system. So as you go up, everything is spherical systems. You don't have a flat atom. <laughs> you don't have a flat, you know, what's orbiting, you know, orbiting it in a, like, you know, so um, use your logic and you'll know, understand. And yeah, there was a firmament that was broken. It was a, a structure of water, actually, that was broken. And that's why they have to have the Van Allen belts now that were created yes. to separate the waters above in space from the waters on earth because the water what creates gravity is breaking of the nucleus of the atom that's the binding force for the atom like i mentioned nasim harriman goes into this so when you release that gravity wave that massive push it's from all the only things that can do that is fission fusion uh matter antimatter reactions or high energy plasma like the surface of a sun or a lightning bolt and when you release that, that creates a massive gravitational pushing wave. Well, in space, you've got stars out there all over the place. So you have a massive pressure in space. It's not what they're telling you, which allows for atoms to maintain their electrons, which means you can have literally bacteria coming off of stars, which NASA says now is true. You can have water in space, but it's very hot too. So it's superheated. So you need to separate the waters above from the waters below. So when the wars happened long ago that broke the firmament, the water barrier, and it rained hard and water kept cascading down because the Earth's atmosphere was super saturated. Now it's not. That allowed for rainbows to come into being. It allowed for it to rain and snow. It uh, changed the orientation of the entire orbit or, or you know, where the continents are and how the oceans are and everything else. And so, yeah, that ferment was broken, but the earth has uh, is not really flat if you're third density and not. If you're second density, like, you know, uh, dogs and cats normally are and birds and such, you know, and I had this discussion with a person who was a flat earth follower and I was diagramming and explaining the formula he was using for, you know, how far away you should see a building. Do you go so many miles out? It drops down. You're dropping from a tangential line, a line to the, to the earth's surface, but a building on a sphere is further and further away. It's, it's literally the top of it's pointed further and further away than the base because it's arcing away from you. 
And so he, I said, you're using the wrong math. And I was diagramming it and he's drawing perpendiculars to the circle I drawn on the paper. I go, that's not a per tangential line. That's a perpendicular. He goes, no, that's the same thing you're drawing. <laughs> what? I go, no, it's not. I go, imagine a ball. Well, I realized that for flat earth people that are still at second density, for them, the world is flat. In their mind, they cannot see a ball. They can only see a circle. They cannot see height. They only see width and depth. And so for, for beings like plants, uh, dogs, cats, et cetera, that are still at second density, yes, for you, the world is flat but it is not flat. It's flat in your awareness. It's not actually flat. For like a virus, they're essentially actually at 1D, where for them, there's no depth. They just know you just go that way. You know, it's just that way. There's no right, left, forward, back. There's just that way. <laughs> they could kind of sort of sometimes move. So as we get more advanced and you learn, you can, you know, you'll realize that you know how the cabal works and so colonel aquino developed that again to create a massive division in the truth or movement because the truth meetings i used to go to where i live they did the flat earth presentation and before they did it they did one meeting a month and i said they were they said we'll allow this guy to do that i said you do that and they'll that'll be your next to the last meeting you'll try to get together to resolve the hate and anger of what everybody gets yelling and screaming and cursing at each other and calling each other vulgarities from the meeting when you did the, the flat earth. And that's exactly what happened. It tore that meeting apart permanently. And so that's why they do it. It's a, it's literally goes to the genetic level again. It goes to people who are second density, the world is flat for them. Goes to people who are third density, the world is round. So and the world is so much a sphere that if you were to take it down to the size of ball bearings, we cannot make a ball bearing that smooth. If you were bringing it down to the size of ball bearings and equipment and cars and all of these things, it's smoother. I mean, it looks, yeah, because it's huge. It looks like it's really bumpy with Everest and the Mariana's Trench. You've got a 28,000 feet deep to 29,000 feet high. You know, you got 57,000 feet of elevation change. But in reality, based on its size, it's smoother than the best ball bearing we can make. It's incredibly smooth and it's slightly, you know, because of the way it forms as it started to spin as it cooled, it, it's slightly along, you know, elongated on the equatorial region, but it's very, pretty much other than that, it's extremely round. Mm -hmm.